All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's session. We'll be beginning in a few minutes. Let uh, some more people get a chance to attend. So, yeah, three minutes to go. If you can hear me, raise your hand. One minute to go. The In Memory Virtual Chapter of PASS. Um, if you're new to PASS, we have a couple of announcements and then we'll get uh, to today's session presented by Matan Jungman from Madeira. So, as you probably already know, this is a virtual chapter. Virtual chapters meet online um, periodically. And PAST has a variety of virtual chapters. You can see uh, most of them here. And they focus either on a specific area like big data or data science or business analytics. But there's also chapters in your local language. So there's the global Chinese, Spanish, Russian, Hebrew, Portuguese, France, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you get free training from some of the top speakers in the world in pretty much any topic related to the Microsoft Data Platform. So just to give you a few examples of um, this month's virtual chapter topics. So you can see in DBA fundamentals, we have an encryption um, session, business intelligence, Power BI, today's session about column store indexes, et cetera, et cetera. But it really doesn't matter what your area of expertise or interest is, past virtual chapters probably have uh, a lot of content, excellent content, that you can either access um, live, like this meeting today, or if you go to the virtual chapters um, web pages at sqlpass.org, um, there's also an archive of all previous sessions, so you can watch whenever is convenient for you. Um, in addition to the virtual chapter, PASS also offers live in-person full-day training events called SQL Saturdays, um, which take place both in America and worldwide. And these are, uh, again, completely free events where you can hear some of the top speakers in the world talking about anything related to the Microsoft data platform. So if you're interested in attending one of those in your local area, please go to sqlsaturday.com and register. PASS is based on volunteers like myself and my Matan, which is going to present to you today. And we wouldn't be able to do it if not for our volunteers. So if you would like to volunteer, there's an ample opportunity to volunteer in many areas, either 
online in SQL Saturdays or in the past summit. So if you are interested in volunteering, and we encourage you to volunteer, either if you want to speak or you want to help organize an event or you just want um, to maybe create your own chapter, by all means go to volunteer at sqlpass.org for more details. Um, this chapter, our chapter, is the in-memory virtual chapter, as you already know. Um, I encourage you to register for the chapter, and this way you will get an email notification about once a month um, with the contents and the link to register for that month's um, session. So I know you didn't come here to listen to me speak, so let me move the presentation right on to Matan. And we'll start learning about column store indexes. Matan, this is all yours. Thank you, Ami. Can you see my screen and hear me well? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, so thank you, Ami, and thanks everyone for joining us for column store indexes, questions and answers. Uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. And today we're going to talk about column store, which is a very, very exciting technology, in my opinion, at least. And I know there are other people in the audience who think so too. And it's a very important technology that takes SQL Server a few steps ahead. Uh, in the database uh, industry, I believe. Uh, and other systems in, in, the, in the database industry go on that path too. So I assume most of you are working in SQL Server, uh, but other systems uh, use column store too, such as Microsoft APS and Azure SQL Data Warehouse and HP Vertica and Amazon Redshift. And many, many vendors understand the power of Column Store. Uh, so we will talk about the SQL Server implementation, but most of the stuff is relevant to those systems too. So a few words about me before we begin. My name is Matan Yudman. I'm a SQL Server MVP, or as the new name says, Data Platform. MVP as, as of a few months ago. I work for a company called Mandera Data Solutions. Uh, we're a consulting and training company. And I have a podcast called SQL Server Radio um, at sqlserverradio.com. It's a fun way to uh, to learn while you jog or while you, you're commuting to work or while you, you're washing the dishes and so on and so on. Uh, me I, and Guy Glancer deliver two shows a month. We try to do it in a fun way and we get some uh, great feedback. So go ahead and check it out. So our agenda for today, we'll talk about what column store is, uh, how is it built, how do we build a column store index, and how is it maintained over time, what is it good for, when should we use it, and when sh uh, we, we should not use it, and how to make your benchmark successful. And why do I say that? Because most probably uh, most of you won't go to more morning to work and implement the column store index in production. What you will probably do is go ahead and play with it and see whether it can fit your workload. And there are a few things to take uh, to take into account uh, when doing this benchmark in order for this benchmark to be successful. And we will also talk about the, the future. A part of this, of this future is SQL Server 2016. Uh, which you can uh, already play with, with with the CTPs. And from what I understand, the RTM is very, very close in something like uh, a month or two. So this is exciting. Okay, so the traditional approach, and as we say, raw store. We didn't have raw store before we had column store, but this is uh, basically the same thing that we've been doing for the past uh, 20 or 30 years, uh, is that SQL Server holds data in 8K pages, and in every single page, uh, we have information uh, about all of the columns in the table. Uh, we, can, we can store data of one, more than one row, uh, but we also have to store the data for all of the columns uh, that, are, that are in the table. So if we want to fetch uh, only a few columns, we have 
uh, to with the data of all columns and only then filter the data in memory. And that, that can cause us to read much more data uh, than we need. So as we said, data is stored row-wise and each page contains data uh, for one or more rows. In column store, each page uh, contains data of a single column. As opposed to a single row, we store the data in columns. And since we store data in columns, and, and data in columns tends to be more repetitive than data in rows, we can compress the data much better than, uh, than we can do with rows. And we will see some algorithms for compressing the data in just a little bit. Uh, but just for an example, uh, let's say we have data of uh, Martin and Ami and Nico and James and so on, and each uh, we have each value we have to store one million times. So essentially, what we can do is instead of storing all of the names one million times each, we can store each name once and only keep pointers to, to that name one million times. That's essentially what we can do. So data is highly compressed because of repeating values and some additional tricks we will see. And since we compress the data, more data fits in memory because it, let's say we have a 100 gigabytes of memory, if the data is compressed, more data will fit in memory. And since memory is much faster than disk, our, the performance of our queries will be much better. Also, each column is fetched independently. Uh, let's say we have a table with 100 columns, but we need only three of those columns uh, for a specific query. In the traditional approach, uh, we had to read the data from all of the, uh, from the pages, and fetch all of the columns, and only filter the irrelevant columns in memory. In column store, we can read uh, only, uh, only the, the excuse me, only the columns that we need. So we, uh, let's say, even if, if we have to go to disk, we fetch the data for only the relevant columns, and then we have to read much less data. And again, our queries work much faster. So only the needed columns on fetch are fetched, and that can dramatically de decrease uh, the I/O that we need to issue against the disks. So some terminology, uh, in column store, a row group is one million quote-unquote rows. So this is a row group, and a segment is one million values of a specific column. So let's say we have a few columns, we have the name column, we have the ID column, and we have the date column. Each of those columns will be separated uh, to a few one million segments, and all of those columns uh, together, the one million uh, values of those columns will be a row group. So we have column segments, uh, and each segment contains values from well, one column. Each segment can contain between 100k rows to 1 million rows. We will see that in a bit. Uh, each segment is compressed and stored as a separate lob, a large object, and the segment is also the unit of transfer from disk, as opposed to, uh, to row store, where, where we work uh, in 8K or 64K chunks, uh, we work uh, with 1 million rows chunks for, uh, from disk when we work with column store. The next thing with column store, after storing the, the data efficiently, uh, we also have something that is called batch mode processing for processing the data much faster. So what is batch mode processing? So data is processed in vectors of 1,000 rows. So if you work uh, with row mode, essentially what you do, even if you, uh, we all know as a DBA that we shouldn't work row by row. So let's say we have to insert data or query the data. We want to work in set-based operations. So let's say we query the table and pull out 500,000 uh, 500, rows and want to update them. 
under the hood, at the end, we'll still work row by row. If, even if we query the data correctly, SQL Server has to go over the rows uh, one by one. It, it would be much faster uh, than what we, we can do in, in the SQL size because, because it, it will be under the hood in the engine, but it's still row by row. Uh, what column store can do and what batch mode can do is take the 1,000 rows and process them in vectors that could be much faster. It uses linear alg algebra. Uh, I sucked in linear al algebra in college, but as we can see, it has some uses uh, in the real world. So it's manipulated in the CPU L1 cache, which is the fastest cache, cache there is for the CPU. Uh, as we said, it, it's much more efficient than working row by row. It has better parallelism and better algorithms for processing the data. Uh, since column store and the SQL Server implementation is relatively new, the SQL Server team could implement some very, uh, very, very good algorithms uh, for working with the data and that's what they did. So what we want to see in the execution plan is actual execution mode of batch and estimated execution mode of batch. And this was um, kind of hard to get uh, in the first implementation of Chrome Store in SQL Server in SQL Server 20, uh, 2012. It's much better in SQL Server 2014 and 2016. It's much easier to get um, batch mode execution and because of that, much better execution plans and execution times. So SQL Server 20, 2012 had some gadgets. Uh, we could only work with uh, what is called a non-clustered column store. We had um, a regular table, a, re a row store table, and we could build a non-clustered column store index on top of it. Uh, so we, uh, we could choose a few columns to build the column store index uh, for and the column store index set on top of that regular table. Once we did that, the table became not, not updatable. So we couldn't insert new rows into the table and if we wanted to uh, update the table, we had to drop the column store, insert the data and build the column store index again. Uh, it can be bypassed with uh, partitioning, so the way to do that was to work uh, with the with a regular table with a non cluster column store on top of it, and we we could keep another table with the same structure only without the column store index. And let's say during the day we inserted the data to the to the updated uh, to the regular table, uh, we then built the non-clustered column store index on top of it and then switch, switched it in to the, to the non-updatable column store table. And then we would union all between the, uh, the non-updatable table and the updatable table and that way we could kind of bypass this, um, uh, this gotcha. So uh, we need, needed to do some work but again it's not that complicated. We did a more complicated things in life than that. Um, the other thing, as we said, is that it, it was hard to get batch mode processing and it's much better than SQL Server 2014 and 2016. So SQL Server 2014 introduced the new clustered column store index, which means that the table itself is the column store index. We, we don't have any row, uh, row store anymore. Uh, we, could, we can work with, uh, with a table that all of it is the, the, um, the column store index. The table is uh, quote-unquote updatable and we will see why it's between brackets. It's easier to get batch mode and since we don't need to store the data in the row store table, we only keep the data in the column store table, we get significant space savings because instead of storing the data twice, uh, we store the data only once and as we saw, uh, there are some very cool algorithms for compressing the data 
and we get some significant space savings because of all of that. Uh, there's also uh, an option called archival, archival uh, compression, which in addition to compressing the data in, at a segment, um, inside each, each segment, when we write the segment to disk, we also implement, uh, I believe it's gzip uh, on the segment itself, and we get some more compression than the regular compression uh, we had uh, by design. Um, you can test that. Uh, obviously, it's more CPU power because of compression and decompression, um, but generally today, uh, the bottleneck in database systems is not the CPU. It may change in the future, but at least today for most systems, uh, the bottleneck is, is disk and memory and not the CPU. So we can use the CPU to compress the data. One thing about quantum store, uh, about clustered quantum store indexes, that no other indexes are allowed. We, we can't create uh, other non-clustered indexes. Uh, for ro row store table, we can have clustered index and non-clustered indexes. For, for clustered quantum store tables, we can't create any indexes at all. We also can't have con constraints, no primary keys, no foreign keys, no unique keys, no anything, because all of those uh, structures use indexes, and since we, we can't create indexes, we can't create those, stru those structures. As a teaser, um, I can tell you that this is changed in SQL Server 2016. So uh, the way to create a uh, clustered column store index is very simple. Create clustered column store index, uh, name of the index on your table, and you go drink a few cups of, copies, or co of coffee, depending on the size of the table, and you have a clustered column store table. I mean, are there any questions up till now? Okay, no. Sorry, sorry, yeah, I was muted. Um, no, no questions so far. So if you do have a question, please use the question tab on the GoToWebinar um, control panel, and I'll mute myself for that. Thank you, Matan. Cool, thank you, Amy. Okay, so now let's talk about how uh, does SQL Server build um, a column store index. So let's say we, we have a table. Uh, with a few uh, hundred million rows. Um, so when we issue the command create clustered column store index on our table, SQL Server first uh, takes the data and separates it to uh, row groups, and this means to one million row chunks. So let's say we have a 500 million row table. Uh, SQL Server will separate the table to five uh, 500 chunks. After that, uh, SQL Server separates the data to columns, or to be more uh, to be more precise, to segments. And after this separation, SQL Server takes each and every segment segment and compresses it. And each time I sh show this picture, I say that I'm not for compressing kids unless they really deserve it. So now let's talk about um, some compression algorithms. Uh, which, uh, which algorithms can SQL Server use in order to compress the data? Uh, so um, one, uh, one algorithm the SQL Server can use is, uh, is called value scale. And so we take the height uh, of, let's say, 180 centimeters, and 150, and 175, and so on. And we have uh, we have a base, and we transform that to keeping lower numbers. So uh, our base in that case is 150, and in the first um, in the first value, we will, we will keep 30, and in the second, zero, and in the third, 25, and so on and so on. Pretty simple. Uh, the second one is called a beta array. So we create a beta array uh, that can keep all of the values uh, 
of the table or, or, or part of the table, and we take this array of names and transform that to uh, some kind of a bit array. So for the first row, uh, Michael will have one, and Guy, Maria, and Matan will have zero. For the second row, Guy will have one, and the rest will have zero, and so on and so on. The third algorithm is called uh, run length, uh, in which we will store the number of times each value uh, sits in the table. So Michael uh, sits uh, three times in the table, and Guy one time, oops, and Maria one time, and Matan two times. And the last algorithm we uh, will demonstrate it's called dictionary encoding, uh, in which we take the we take the data, transform the names to IDs, and then keep only the ID. It's kind of like normalization, uh, but SQL Server does that under the hood. So we take Michael, Guy, Maria, and Matan, give each each and every one IDs, and uh, for the first one we'll keep one because this is Michael, and for the second we we'll keep two because this is guy, and so on and so on. And there are more algorithms, and you can read about all of them in Nico Neugebauer's uh, blog. Uh, Nico has amazing series of blog posts about column store, the number one resource about column store in the world. And uh, for my count, the last post was number 76. Uh, so, pretty amazing what Nico, Nico is doing over there. And as we said, and, and more. Uh, there are more ways for SQL Server, and again for uh, all of the other column store vendors actually, to compress the data. Now, after we understand how the column store index is built, how do we load the data? into the column string. So when we load data directly to, uh, to column store, the data doesn't, isn't inserted directly to the column store actually, but it's inserted into an object called the delta, the delta store. And the delta store is an unindexed heap. I believe it's compressed, but it's still unindexed. And it goes, it goes there until Data Delta store has about 100 million rows. It's a 148,000 and something rows, and only when the Delta store has that number of rows, it will be closed, and then there will come a guy called the Tuple Mover, will take that Delta store, compress it, and load it into the column store. So, uh, this can this can cause some uh, some problems. Let's say you um, you load lots of data in parallel to SQL Server, but you don't load enough data for the Delta store uh, to be closed. So let's say you load um, 500,000 rows um, into the table in parallel for uh, from a free thread. So you can end up with a few open Delta stores. You will have to read. Uh, when you query the data, we'll have to read the data from the Delta store, which is unindexed, and the data is not inside the column store, and your queries can suffer. So you have to watch out uh, for this issue. And also another thing uh, to, take, um, to take into account is that the tap and mover is a pretty lazy guy. It wakes up only, um, only every five minutes, and if it sees delta store that, that it needs to compress and load into the column store, it, do, it does it only one by one and using one thread. So you have to take that into account and if you load lots of data in SQL Server, there, there are other ways to do it that are better than, um, than relying on the top of And we'll talk about that. Now, how is delete implemented? Uh, when you issue a delete statement against the column store, the, the row isn't actually 
deleted, but it, it's only marked as deleted in, in an array called the delete bitmap. And then in order to know if, if a row is deleted or not, when querying the data SQL Server, we have to read the data from the column store and from the delete bitmap, and the merge of the two or the join of the two uh, will give the truth about the table. So the row is not physically deleted, it's only marked as deleted. It will only um, be physically deleted when we, we build the, the column store index. And now, how is update implemented? We uh, mark the row as deleted in the delete meetmap and insert the new values to the delta store. Now, how is it rebuilt? So what we can do is alter index rebuild, and this command will take the uh, the column store index and repeat the process uh, that we sh that we showed. Uh, separate the table to one million row chunks, and separate the rows to uh, to segments, and compress the data. As we said, it we created the cluster column store index, um, but it, it can have some problems. Um, when we rebuild, uh, we build the column store index, and uh, not only when we rebuild the index, but when we build it uh, from scratch, a SQL Server um, will strive to do it in parallel, and that makes sense because uh, rebuilding an index can take some time, and doing it in parallel can reduce the amount of time uh, it takes to build the index. The problem is that when using a few parallel threads, um, each and every thread will go and grab some data. And that way uh, we can have uh, some uh, we can have some problems uh, when doing something that is called segment elimination later on when we query the data. What segment elimination is? Um, uh, if you work with partition, you know the concept of partition elimination. When uh, we want to read data from only the partitions that we actually need uh, to read and not from the whole table. So segment elimination is the same concept essentially, where we want to read only the segments that are really relevant. So let's say we have an ID column and we want to query the table for for the IDs that are smaller than, let's say, one million. So if we have segment elimination, we will read, let's say, only one segment. If we don't have segment elimination, we will have to read more, uh, more segments than we really need. So uh, this, this can cause problems when we build the table in parallel, and because of that, using MaxDOP1, when building or rebuilding the index can, ha can help in that area because only one thread we, uh, we build the table, uh, we build the index, and there is less chance, uh, f um, actually there is more chance for each and every thread to grab data that, that doesn't in interleave with other ranges and that will improve segment elimination. We will see a demo about that a little later. Now, another thing that can uh, improve segment elimination is to build the, uh, the clustered index, uh, excuse me, the, to build the clustered column store index on top of an existing cluster index. So if we take the ID example, uh, let's say we have a table, we build a clustered index uh, on top of that ID column, and then we create a column st clustered column store index on top of that clustered index, and this will keep the ordering according to that column. So at least for that column, when querying it, uh, we will have maximum of segment elimination when working with the table. So if you build the table on top of a clustered index and use max dop one uh, you maximize your chances of segment elimination. Um, so this is kind of a, of a gacha. You you have to uh, you have to build the clustered index and then the column store index. So a, li a, li a few extra steps 
And I hope it, it will be better in maybe in SQL Server 2016, but that's what we need to do, at least for now. What does Alter Index I say? Uh, when we issue Alter Index reordering organize, what SQL Server does is uh, uh, compresses the closed row, row groups. So a row group or a delta store is marked as closed when it gets to 1,048,000 uh, 1, uh, rows. Um, and then it waits for the top and mover to take it into the table. So when we issue Alto Index Reorganize, we basically say grab the closed row groups, compress them, and insert them into the column store index. If we use uh, the hint of compress all row groups, it will compress uh, all of the row groups and put them inside the cluster index, um, uh, the cluster column store index, excuse me, uh, both the closed row groups and the open row groups. And you need to use that alter index reorganize when the tuple mover can't handle the load. Let's say uh, you load um, a few million rows uh, at once. So you can't really rely on uh, the tuple mover to do it because it, it will take it qu quite some time to do it alone. So what you can do at the end of the data load process is the issue an alter index reorganize and SQL Server will grab all of this data, compress it, and put it in inside the cluster column store index. So why is it so fast? As we said, because of compression, we, we have to read less, much less data. Uh, we have batch mode. When we read the data, reading and manipulating the data is much faster. Only, only needed columns are fetched. We, uh, again, we read much less data, and we have segment elimination, at least for some of the, of the queries and some of the values. So we don't have to read all of the segments uh, in the column store index. We read only a part of the segments. Uh, another thing is improved I operation. Uh, with regular table, regular row store tables, a SQL Server uh, will issue read ahead uh, in a size of up to 512 case. In uh, column store index, SQL Server can work with read ahead in a size of up to 8 megabytes. So this is very impressive and this only says that we, even if we go to disk, we read the data much faster than regular row store tables. So wh what, what is column store uh, good for? Uh, so column store is, uh, first of all, what it's not good for? It's not good for OLTP. Uh, it's good for the big, massive aggregation fact tables, the big BP tables that we, we issue analytic queries against. And it's also good for uh, Y tables when there's no option to cover all of the queries. Let's say we have um, a 50 column uh, column table. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to uh, if we have a table of let's say 10 columns, uh, and we know most of our queries. We can use covering indexes to cover most of the queries, and performance can be generally good. But if you have wider tables and we have all kind of uh, we have a big variety of queries, it's hard to cover all of those queries, and column store is better at that. And again, because of the design of, of column store index, uh, tables that have many repetitive values and low change rate uh, can benefit from column store index. And now let's stop talking and see a demo. And for a start, we will we will use the AdventureWorks DW 2014 database, and we will start loading some data. So, uh, for a start, we will insert 100 million rows into the column store table, and when we finish, we will look at the DMV called sys dot column store row groups and see the value of the relevant row group. You keep it, we'll let it run for a few more seconds. 
Okay, and then when we query the DMV, we can see that we have an open row group. So we have an open row group with 100 million rows. Excuse me, 1 million rows. So at that, st at that stage, the, the row group is open. And when we create the data, we read those 1 million rows, and not from the column store, it's not compressed, but from the delta store, which is, again, an unindexed heap. Now what we will do is we need to pass the number of 1,048,000 1, rows, so we will add 50, 000, an additional 50,000 rows into the table. And again, query the DMV, and what we can see here is that we don't have the uh, uh, the open row group. Uh, we just have some leftovers from Amaru load of uh, about 1,000 rows. And when we go down, we can see that we have a closed row group. And this row group waits for the tuple mover to compress it and load it into the clustered columns to index. And as we can see, we have some, um, most of the other row groups are already compressed, which means that they are inside the clustered columns to index. Now, what, what would happen if we load uh, the, uh, the exact number of rows that is supposed to close the row group. So we will load the data and we will see that it still it doesn't bypass the delta store. We still have to go through the delta store and wait for the top and mover uh, to compress it. So we let it run for a few more seconds again. Okay, and when we Query the data and scroll down. We can see, excuse me, that we have two closed row groups, one from our previous load and one from our current load, and they are both waiting for the top and move to wake up, compress them, and load them into uh, into the clustered column store index. The way to bypass um, the, the delta store is to use bulk insert, is to use bulk, bulk load, and when we use a bulk load by using, a, let's say, bulk insert, is, excuse me, um, that w when we use a bulk insert and load more than 100,000 rows, the rows will bypass the delta store and will be loaded directly to the column store. And if you remember, we said that each segment can hold data of between 100,000 rows and 1 million rows, and this is why uh, this is the case. When we bulk insert more than 100,000 rows, the rows will bypass delta store and go straight to the columns. And this is actually a much better way to load data into the column store. So we will clean up and hurry up to our second demo. We just let it roll back. Okay. Now let's see. Oh, no, this one, this one. Now let's see some benefits of the clustered column store index. So we start now. Uh, I have a table. Uh, with about 120 million rows. This is a row store table, and the amount of data that uh, the SQL Server uh, had to allocate to it is about 16 gigabytes for the row store table. And when we look at the same table only in its clustered column store form, we can see that we need to store 
only about one gigabyte uh, for this table. So this is about 90% compression, uh, pretty impressive and pretty nice, and, and this only means that we need to read much less data uh, in the column store than in the row store. Now let's see uh, an example. Uh, we'll first clear uh, the cache, and by the way, if you're wondering why I'm issuing, uh, first of all, I'm issuing in a checkpoint in order for all of the all of the data to be flushed uh, to disk. Uh, if you're wondering uh, why I use two checkpoints, this is actually something that I learned many years ago from Ami. Uh, Ami told me in, in one course that uh, the first checkpoint tells to SQL Server, uh, go ahead and checkpoint the pages to disk, uh, but, it, uh, but fire it will at your free time. And the second checkpoint actually tells it uh, go ahead and do it now. Uh, so I don't know if, if it's still correct, but I still do it in order to verify that indeed all of the data goes out to disk. So we flashed our uh, data to disk and we will um, issue some typical data warehouse queries. Uh, so we will use fact internal says big uh, table and join it to the team product big a table and work against uh, and filter on the product key column. And most of the queries would be very fast because it's actually um, a new PC with SSD, so uh, we won't see very long queries, but we will uh, we will talk about the differences we will see. So for the regular table, uh, we issue. Uh, we issue the query, and as we see, uh, things are pretty fast. And we read, uh, we have about uh, 3,000 logical reads, and about 8,000 uh, with head reads here, and an additional five, uh, 6,000 with head reads uh, for the other table. But this is pretty fast uh, by, by all means. Now we'll query the column store table. And this is still pretty fast, but it's slower than the regular table. And we can see that we had some low logical reads here, and some, as we see, we have some uh, some information about the segment skipped and segment read. Uh, you don't, we don't have that in SQL Server 2014. It's new in SQL Server 2016. I use CT, uh, SQL Server 2016 CTP 3.2, and we have some more reader head reads and so on and so on. So as we can see, if we cover the table in uh, for all store tables, if uh, we don't have too many columns, and we can cover the queries, we can still work pretty good with the raw store table. Now, what happens when we add some more columns uh, to our query? So, when we do that uh, against the regular table, it's still pretty fast, but it had to read some more data. We had some uh, um, about 20, uh, 25k reader head reads, and some more logical reads, and, and an additional 18,000 reader head reads, and so on and so on. What happens in column store? Now column store works much faster, and it reads pretty much the same data as it did earlier. So column store deals with adding more columns and with working with very, very wide tables and wide queries um, better than, uh, than regular tables. So this is some scenario that uh, you can use in order, to, in order to say this table fits column store and this table don't fit. And again, it's only a candidate, uh, don't say automatically that, that it, it's column store worthy, uh, please take that. Now, can, can it be even better? Uh, we, again, we'll, uh, we'll issue DBCC drop in buffers and checkpoint, and we'll work against another table called fact internet says big underscore column store underscore 
all those. And we'll issue the query, and it's very, very fast. And we can see, if you remember the numbers, uh, we can see that uh, we read a little less data than before. And, and we can see that we skipped more segments than earlier. You know, you know what? Let's, um, let's run the two queries so we can test that. So this is the regular column store table, and this is the ordered column store table. And for the first table, we skipped 85 segments. And for the second table, we skipped 106 segments. And this is because I used the trick of creating uh, creating cl uh, clustered index on the ID, on the segment key column, and then building the clustered column store index on top of it with a max dot of one. And how we how can we see that? Uh, we can issue a tape. Um, excuse me. Um, a query against six dot column store segments. And see that um, that uh, that for this first table we have some um, some collision in the ranges. Uh, we can see that uh, for different segments uh, we have um, mean data IDs and max data ID ranges that that uh, intersect each other. And for the second table we will scroll down and we will see that. Let me just find it. Um, Matan, just a quick reminder, yes. we are on the 10 minute mark, so... Oh, thank you. Yes. Great, thank you, and let me just find that. If, if, if you can, you can look at the data and see that we have uh, the section between the segments with the ranges is much better, and I will uh, move on to the next demo. Okay, so for the last demo, what I did is I created a table called uh, Website Hits, and I inserted data uh, from uh, 1975 up until um, a few months ago uh, for Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, CNN, and so on and so on. I, j I just loaded uh, some big amounts of data, and I created a cluster column store index and a dimension in order to uh, run some typical data warehouse queries. So uh, we'll turn on statistics time and statistics IO on and try to look at the differences because as we said it will still be uh, pretty fast in all of the cases because the table is not that big. So what I want to do is uh, calculate the sum of, of the hits for Google. So the first thing that I can do is use only the website hits with this, uh, that have the string of Google. I, I use a, uh, a column with um, a string column in order to store the data inside the website hits table. And it's, it's very, very fast. It's hard to, uh, to understand uh, from this scenario the problem, but when, when we look at the amount, amount of reads we had uh, we had to do, we can say that we have uh, the log logical reads of uh, about 2,000. And another thing we can do, um, I just want to show you the actual execution plan. And the actual execution plan is a column store index scan and then a hash match and then parallelism and so on. And actually when I wrote this presentation, the execution plan was a little different and I will show you some uh, image from Nichols post and it looks about like this. What happened is that uh, we had to pull the data from the columns to index and then filter the data in memory. Um, and the problem was that SQL Server, well, when uh, when filtering on strings, SQL Server couldn't do uh, the filtering at the storage engine side. It, we had to pull off the, the, all of the data from the column store index and filter only in memory. Um, taking the filter 
in applying it at the storage level is called predicate pushdown. And SQL Server couldn't do it, uh, the predicate, predicate pushdown for strings in SQL Server 26, uh, 2014. It actually does that in SQL Server 2016, and that's why we don't see it here in this plan. Um, so what we see is that uh, we have to read some amounts of data, and another option is to use the fact table, uh, where, where, which stores uh, Google only once, and then uh, it's, it, it's actually about uh, the same thing since we have predicate push down. And another thing we can do is just go for fact website hits. Uh, we know that the website ID of Google is two, and filter on that. And in this case, uh, it's supposed to be the best. It's actually about the same thing. Again, uh, I guess I need to update this demo. It's more relevant to SQL Server 2014. Uh, it's not that adjusted to SQL Server 2016. But what I want to emphasize in this demo is that column store is not the magic solution for bad design or bad code. If you have bad database design or bad code, uh, column store will not save you. In, in, in a few cases it will, but in most cases it won't. So if you have a very, uh, very bad designed uh, tables or queries that are very, very complicated and written bad, uh, column store uh, is not the answer. So column store is mostly good uh, for style schema and, and fact tables. Um, and this is the, the best scenario for you to use it. It's not good uh, for OLTP systems. It's not good for tables that hold all of the data, the mother of all tables, as I, as I like to say. So you need to watch out for those things. SQL Server 2016 is, as, as we saw, is better when working with strings. But again, if you can store your string once and not 100 million times, it will be better even in columns. So how to make your benchmark successful? Uh, don't, as we said, don't delay database design and beware of textual columns. Uh, don't rely on the top and move it. Uh, so take care of rebuilding and reorganizing um, uh, if needed. Low data using bulk insert and partition switch uh, instead of loading the data into, um, into the Delta store and relying on the top and mover and delete data also using partition switch, don't rely on the delete bitmap. And also partition key helps in, in segment elimination. If you, uh, if you work with partitioning, so you have two eliminations. One, the, uh, the partition elimination, and the second one is the segment elimination. And again, building on top of the cluster index helps Ordering, and one last thing, the new cardinality estimator can be a factor. We had some benchmark we did for a client, and the old cardinality estimator uh, was much better than the new one. And uh, this actually happens quite a lot, and I just read yesterday uh, the Visual Studio team uh, was very transparent in, in an outage they had in uh, Visual Studio Online. And, and what they found is that uh, the new coordinate estimator made uh, each and every one of, the, of their queries um, get uh, 40 gigabytes of memory grants, and that, that basically uh, blew their servers on fire. So watch out for the new coordinate estimator, estimator whether, whether you work with column store or not. Um, Let's talk a little bit about hybrid scenarios um, uh, because maybe you really want to work f uh, with both OLTP style tables or wall store tables and column store tables. So uh, we can work with... We have like three minutes, um, so okay. it's up to you if you want to do this last slide or if you want to give some time for questions. 
Yes, I, I think I think I will just talk about the hybrid scenarios and then take some questions and just say that SQL Server 2016 and Azure SQL Database uh, have some real good things with Column Store. So I will just finish this slide. Go ahead. So, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. So okay. So. Um, you may have some hybrid scenarios where you need to uh, to work with both uh, LTP style queries and aggregation and reporting queries. Uh, so one thing you can do is work with non-trust.column store on top of a raw store table. You can also work with an index view on top of cluster column store table in SQL Server 2014, but it's generally very, very slow, so watch out for that. You can also work with the regular table and the cluster column store table. And if you say that this duplicates the data, I will say that we've been doing this for years because for years we've been working with, with regular tables and with aggregation tables where we aggregated the data and the all TP queries went to the regular table and the reporting queries went to the aggregation tables. And this will actually be solved in SQL Server 2016 uh, when you will have the option to uh, uh, to create uh, non-clustered indexes on top of a clustered column store index and column store indexes on top of regular tables and I will keep the rest of SQL Server 2016 for you to, um, to learn about. So, are there any questions? Well, I don't see any on the question tab, so I assume that there are no questions. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much, Matan, for a wonderful presentation. I know thank I've you, enjoyed honey. it. And um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and hope to see you soon in our next session. Um, of the in-memory uh, fast virtual chapter, I remind you again, go to imvc.sqlpass.org and register so you won't miss um, our next session. So thank you again and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Amy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.